It was the newspaper clipping referring to the imminent eclipse. Wrapped inside it was another small piece of paper. It was a bank statement for Ubier's account from an automatic telling machine. The last five withdrawals were for large amounts and all made in Marseille. It was beginning to make sense. Ubier had organized Nico's abduction. Ubier withdrew money from Marseille. Ubier was connected with Trans Global, who shipped their goods from a warehouse in Marseille. That's how the torn Trans Global label had once read. Marseille, not Mars. It wasn't much of a lead, but it was all I had. I set off immediately to catch the evening train. It was almost dawn when I arrived in Marseille. I traced Condor Transglobal to a desolate dockside. A chain-link fence barred the entrance to the docks. What's the big idea? I don't know. The dog went berserk for no apparent reason. He's trained to do that. The idea is to deter any would-be intruder. Oh, I get it. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. Just remember, he's a trained attack dog. A killer! The chimney was a metal pipe with a conical hat on top to stop the rain getting in. Ouch! That's hot! The panties would not have been thick enough to shield this level of heat. The spike held a stack of papers which appeared to be shipping documents. None of them referred to Condor Transglobal. Ouch! Gotcha! That'll learn you to leave things alone. Bobbing up and down in the oily water was the watchman's discarded beer bottle. The bottle was just out of reach. Nothing was going to get me into that water if I could help it. A short stick of wood floated near the edge of the landing stage. The stick had a hook on one end. I figured it was a boat hook for hooking on boats. It was a short wooden handled boat hook. I just knew that boat hook would be useful for something. As for the bottle, even if I couldn't find a use for it, I'd cleaned up the dock. The guard dog was staring at me with a hungry look in his eyes. Here, boy. The platform was held up by a hinged bracket. I couldn't figure out what it was for. Maybe it was part of a structure which no longer existed. It was a large bucket filled with coal. 
It was a packet with a picture of a boxer dog on the front. I couldn't reach the packet. The watchman was big and bulgy, like a sack of potatoes. His flushed and bloated face wore a sleepy, amiable expression. Excuse me. Huh? Who's there? It was the beer bottle that slab of a watchman had dumped in the sea, now half full of filthy dock water. The label read, Surge, the beer that clears your head. The bottle was half filled with water. Maybe it would cool the cone down enough to touch it. Now I could see into the pipe which formed the chimney. Hmm. The bottle had blocked the chimney, and the hut was filling up with smoke. The packet was full of dog biscuits. Someone had once told me a piece of coal brought you luck. Who was I to argue with irrational superstition? Baked beans in ketchup. That mug was a health risk. I decided to leave it where it was. Stove equals heat, heat equals burn, burn equals excruciating pain. The box contained nothing but blank forms. It was the box of biscuits I'd taken from the watchman's hut. Gourmet dog. The snack your dog would bake himself. Sure, as if I'd let a stupid dog loose in the kitchen. There was a cute picture of a boxer dog wearing oven mittens. Here, boy. Have a nice crunchy biscuit. I felt a slight twinge of conscience as I prepared to give the dog a dunking. It soon passed. As I'd expected, the dog could swim like a... well, like a dog. Watch. As my dad used to say, I'm not into time, man. Well, you're too early. What time is it, anyhow? The big hand's on the floor. Why aren't you in bed? I can explain everything. Never mind, I ain't that interested. What time do you open the gates? Seven. 
Do you mind if I hang out here till the docks open? Please yourself, but you'll have a long wait. It's Sunday, and tomorrow is the start of the national holiday. Everything is closed for a month. Well, wouldn't you just know it? Does that dog belong? Nah, he comes with the job. I just feed him every now and then. More then than now, I'd say. What's the dog's name? Twenty. It's unusual for a dog. It's his registration number. Security dog number twenty. Does number twenty have rabies? Nah, just a bad attitude. Like I said, he's a trained attack dog. They took him when he was a puppy and messed with his head to make him the way he is. Ever heard of Condor Transglobal? Sure. They have a warehouse here. Well, could I take a look? Not until after the holidays. Come back in a month. I have to make a delivery to Condor Transglobal. Where's your rig? Uh, about half a mile down the road. And you walked here? Jeez, are you some kind of nut? Nah, it was easy. I just put one foot in front of the other. Are you going to let me make my delivery? Not without the paperwork. You get the papers, you make your delivery, and I get a fat backhander. I was getting nowhere with the story about being a trucker. Do you know what kind of business Condor's involved in? I'm paid to guard the gate. Their business is none of mine. I'm looking for a young woman. At the docks? What kind of woman do you have in mind? You don't understand. It's my girlfriend I'm trying to find. Well, I ain't seen her, and you should tell her the docks ain't no place for a young lady. They're dirty and they're dangerous. I'm certain my girlfriend was brought here when she was abducted. What? Your girl was kidnapped? Yeah. Struck down by an Indian with a poison dart. A poison dart, huh? I could tell he didn't believe me. This is the dart that the Indian shot at my girlfriend. Sheesh! That's pretty weird, but I don't see why you'd expect to find her here. Have you ever heard of Professor Ubie? Me? None of my friends are professors or anything like that. I have these very exotic panties. Take them away, you pervert! What's the problem with the stove? I don't know. Damn flu seems to be blocked. Maybe some bird built a nest in the chimney. Huh? A gull, maybe, or... An albatross. Albatross my ass. That chimney's too hot. What's wrong with your hand? In my hand? Oh, uh, friction burns. Friction burns? Yeah, I, uh, slid down a rope. You don't want to make a habit of that, pal. Let me in, and I'll give you this lump of coal. I got plenty of coal already. You always carry it around in your pocket? I heard it was lucky. Superstitious crap. I got a whole bucket of it in here, and it ain't brought me no luck. Do you recognize this metal cone? Say, that's just like the Tin Man War. You know, the Wizard of Oz. I'd have never taken you for a fan of Dorothy and Toto. That dumb kid? She ruined the whole damn thing for me, all that singing and stuff. Anyhow, she wasn't even a real kid. They stuffed her in a corset so her titties didn't show. Take a look at this letter. That's sick. Did you write it? Oh, no. No, oh, it's a letter from my girlfriend's admirer. If I was you, I'd smack him in the mouth. Well, that's not my style, but thanks for the advice. I gotta go now, but I'll be back. Can't wait. Breaking steel padlocks with my bare hands was a feat I'd never mastered. It 
red Pont de Nord, fine wine producers. I didn't recognize the label. It was a beautiful piece of 19th century engineering, but not a lot of use to me. It read Condor Trans Global. I'd come to the right place. Now all I had to do was get inside. That door seemed to be the only way into the warehouse. The din must have drowned out the sound of my knocking. The grill opened from the inside. The din must have drowned out the sound of my knocking. Maybe there was a way in up there. It was a duct from a ventilation fan. The metal housing prevented me from getting to the fan. The window wasn't fully shut. was the creep who kidnapped Nico, and I had a score to settle. The guy was partly hidden behind a stack of crates. I couldn't reach the blades of the fan, which was just as well. If I'd stuck my fingers in there, I'd never be able to play guitar again. That did the trick. The fan clunked and shorted out as its blades were mashed by the boat hook. Hey, you make any more noise, I break your arms. That bully needed to be taught a lesson. Garzak's already mad because we didn't get the stone. You give me any trouble, I'll tell him it was all your fault. Karzak? That must be his boss. Pizza delivery? I didn't order pizza. No? This is the Condor Trans Global Shipping Company, isn't it? I don't like pizza. Oh, come on. Everyone likes pizza. Maybe he was allergic to mozzarella. Hey, what now? Look, this pizza's been paid for. You might as well take it. I told you. I don't like pizza. Not even with extra olives? I hate them. Olives are the devil's butt nuggets. If you know what's good for you, you'll open this door. What if I don't? I'll kick your head in. Okay. I'll come out, you three.
There was a small drawer in the desk. Knowing my luck, it was bound to be locked. The only interesting thing I found was a small brass key. There was a notice board beside the desk with an assortment of paperwork on it. Among the paperwork which adorned the notice board was something which caught my eye. It was a delivery note from Condor Transglobal, and the address was Coromonte City. A filing cabinet. It was locked. The little brass key didn't fit the lock. The room was filled with transglobal crates. All the crates were firmly sealed. Whoa! Don't shoot! The little guy had a blowpipe. That confirmed my suspicions about what had happened to Nico. I waited for him to shoot me but it didn't happen. Instead, he seemed to want to tell me something. Uh... What? What do you want? Uh, uh... He seemed excited, almost desperate. What did he want so bad? Hi. Uh, I'm not going to hurt you. Guaramonte. Is that where you're from? Coramonte City? Guaramonte! Guaramonte! Okay, okay. What does this key unlock? Huh? Hey, you're manacled. Who did this? That big thug? I'm gonna set you free, okay? Come back here! The little guy had gone to ground amongst the stack of crates. It was an elevator to the upper floor. just in time. Interrupting the beam of light kept the doors from closing and stopped anyone from using the elevator. But what now? The label just wasn't sticky enough to stay in place. There. That would keep the doors from closing. I was wrestling with the small crate when I noticed the label on its side. Danger. Live contents do not drop. I didn't want to risk dropping the crate and releasing its live contents. No chance. Whatever those crates contained, they were heavy. The statue looked as if it was Central or South American in origin. The statue looked way too heavy for me to move. There wasn't enough room to move the handle. The short chain stopped the cuffs reaching from the statue to the winch. The window was not designed to open. A sturdy beam was jammed across the doors. These doors were not going to open. I 
couldn't move the crate until I'd blocked the light beam with something else. Nothing happened. That was probably because the elevator was already on this floor. I noticed a faint mark on the wooden floor. There was an arc-shaped scratch on the floor, as if a door had been opened in the nearby wall. My fingers traced the outline of a secret door in the wall. Then I found a small round stud, which was set flush to the surrounding wooden paneling. Just as I'd hoped, a secret room. Nico! There. How are you feeling? Oh, thanks, Georges. How on earth did you find me? I knew Oubier had been in Marseille. But never mind about me. How about you tell me exactly what's going on, starting with that Mayan stone? I picked it up from one of Cossack's men in Paris. I was expecting a consignment of narcotics. Drugs? Yes. The proof I needed to expose Cossack's smuggling operation. I'd set it up to act as his courier, and once I had the proof, I planned to go straight to Inspector Mu. But instead of the dope I'd expected, they sent me that stone instead. And to find out more, I called Professor Oubier, who invited me to his mansion. At least, I thought it was Oubier. I don't get it. If Karzak's business is drugs, why is he so desperate to get his hands on that stone? Maybe it has some significance to the local people in Central America. It could be Karzak's means of getting them to work for him. Anyway, we've got to get out of here. Nico, wait! It was a grotesque little statue of a figure carrying a shield and a spear. It was the masking tape that had been used on Nico. I decided to keep the masking tape. It was bound to be of some use to me. We can't use the elevator. If that thug Pablo's recovered, he'll be waiting for us. We've got to do something. Where does that door lead to? I'm not sure. Hopefully, the tape would prevent those doors from closing and stop the Indian from being able to call the elevator. Nico looked well considering her ordeal. Okay, tell me what you know about Condor. Condor Trans Global exports Aztec and Mayan relics from Central America to Europe. But that's just a cover for the real business. Drug smuggling. What proof do you have? Nothing yet. Do you know where Condor is based? In Central America. A place called Cuaramonte. I saw that name on a docket downstairs. Tell me about this Karzak guy. 
Well, I saw him for only a few minutes, but he frightens me. I got the impression that Pablo was nervous when he was around too. His eyes, they're like a wild animal's, like a tiger. That's what scared me most about him. He looked so unpredictable and dangerous. Did you know Ubier's wife was a film star? No, I didn't know he was married. What happened to her? She died. In mysterious circumstances, apparently. How mysterious? I heard she was murdered. Possibly by Ubier himself. A murderer, huh? André said he was something of a celebrity. Did I hear you refer to Inspector Moon? Yes, you remember him? Well, of course I do. But I thought he was dead. Oh no, he reappeared after the broken sword case had blown over. When he found out who was in with the Neo Templars, he went into hiding. Moo knew more than was good for him. Does he know about our involvement with the case? If he does, he's not telling. Still, he got a sudden promotion. Did that Indian guy mistreat you? If you forget about the abduction, verbal threats and bondage, no. Well, what about the little guy? I don't think he knows where he is or what he's doing here. The big guy, Pablo, he brought Titipoco from the jungle. Titty what? Titipoco. That's what I heard Pablo call the dwarf. Do you recognize this? Is that the dart which knocked me out? That's right. I kept it as a souvenir. Have you any idea who this little statue is supposed to be? I'm not very well acquainted with my deities, George. But whatever his name, he sure is ugly. I found these in your bag. Oh, they were a gift. I know, I read the note. God knows what was going through Andre's mind. I think that's quite plain enough. Look, the little guy downstairs was chained up with these. That must have been Pablo's doing. I don't blame him though. That little guy is dangerous. You're still sore about that poison dart? Of course I'm sore. It rose about six inches off the floor, and I said a silent prayer to whoever had discovered the power of hydraulics. What on earth are you doing? Trying to raise the statue so I can hook it to that pulley. Is that really going to help us? I like to keep myself occupied in times of stress. The short chain stopped the cuffs reaching from the statue to the winch. It would be much easier to attach the rope to the statue first. It was too heavy for me to move on my own. Could you give me a hand to push this statue? What for? This, my dear, is our passport to freedom. If you say so, dear. Okay, push! Great teamwork. Nice to be working with you again, Mr. Stobart. A cable stretched way out across the docks to a building in the distance. I thought about hanging from the cable with my bare hands, but it was too far to the other end of the cable to escape that way. Nico, I have a great idea. 